Hi guys, it's Cal Amstutz, the genealogy investigator. Today I am here to talk to you guys about eight steps to verify your finds and to see where they lead. Um, there are billions of ancestors that are in family trees online. Um, and they've had genealogists give them names, but now what? What do you do with all that new information that's uncovered? Um, if you don't take the right steps, you could really be chasing the wrong ancestors. I'm guilty of this myself. Um, or you could even miss clues altogether. And that leads to one giant brick wall. Um, don't worry though, I'm not gonna let that happen. I have eight really great steps to show you to um, verify that ancestral data and make the most out of it to learn more about your ancestor's life and the times they lived in. Um, so the first point I'm going to touch on is you need to verify that new information. Don't add this new information to your tree just yet. I know you're super excited. Maybe you got a leaf and you're like, yes, like this is the break that I need. Hold on. Um, you're going to find that the majority of online family trees are posted without any real source information that you can track. Um, even if your tree does contain some kind of source information, the person who posted the tree, they could have made an error in transcribing or interpreting those records. So the first item on your to-do list is you're going to want to verify the names, the dates, and the place that you found these records. Um, do the logic check. Are the names, the dates, and the places close enough to your data to be your family? Um, do the dates make sense? Um, a great example is, you know, our listed parents in an age where they can have children or should have children um, because that can really make or break your case. Then I want you to look for the evidence to back up the researcher's claims. Um, family tree sites, they might store sources um, or research notes in different locations. So look around the tree. Uh, you might also try to contact that researcher or the person that's sharing that tree just for any missing details or to question them, pick their brain a little bit further. Most family tree sites, they're going to let you do this, um, but there is no guarantee that you will get a reply. So I don't want you to get your hopes up too much because, um, you know, sometimes they just either don't see it or they don't take time out of their schedules to follow up. Um, if you do find the source information that's like super awesome, like Bravo, I want to give you a hand um, because that's awesome. Track down and double check those records though. Otherwise, treat names, places, and dates as clues to conducting your own research. Use those free databases or subscription services, whichever you prefer, to search for the births, the deaths, the census, um, and the marriage records that really can back up what you found with that hard evidence. Um, a lot of these sites, they're going to allow you to filter the databases by geographic regions and the types of the documents, which is going to help your search immensely. Some of these databases, though, they will have the digitized original records that you can review and download. Um, Shoebox is great for Ancestry.com. I tend to throw things in my shoebox, but then I also download um, just kind of checks and balances. Others, they will index um, the records that you find. Um, and provide you the information to obtain that original copy. So as you become more confident in each piece of the information as it pertains to your ancestor's truth, you can add it all to your family tree. Um, if you start checking sources and you find the tree is incorrect, treat that data as suspect. Um, never take found research at face value as a professional genealogist. I want to caution you guys so much against this. Make sure that you're doing your own research and make sure that any cited information, you're following it up to make sure that it leads you to where that researcher said it would lead you. Um, the second tip is reach out to family members. Um, I know it sounds kind of obvious. If you find an ancestor in an online tree, the tree owner could potentially be a family member or maybe a cousin. Um, he or she could have more information about the family, um, photographs, which I think are gold, 
um, or even stories that could really allow you to collaborate your research together. Um, reach out to the tree owner if possible. Before sending out an email, I recommend setting up like a free email account that um, can be used just for your genealogy research. It just kind of helps you track a little bit better. It can also um, keep your genealogy correspondence separate and a little bit more organized than in a centralized location. Uh, many genealogists are really sensitive to how the um, family tree data is used though, so I do want to caution you. They may want to be sure that you're not going to post information online about like living people that are within their family tree. Um, you will find that most researchers aren't going to mind sharing data, but they do prefer that you share as well. So it's kind of like, I will share this with you if you share this with me. Um, when you're sending out that first message to the tree owner, reference that common ancestor and describe how you think you're related. Um, it just kind of breaks the ice a little bit. Offer to share the information that you have collected um, or to exchange like a GEDCOM file. If you don't hear from them after a few months, maybe try reaching out again. It's never a bad practice. Um, the third tip is visit the address or the town that's referenced. Um, if an online family tree lists like the name of a town or maybe even an address, um, where your family might have once lived, you should go to Google Earth, um, which is free, and you can fly to that location just to see what it looks like today. Um, you can also use the internet just to look up historical maps to see what places look like in the past. It can also give you kind of a lay of the land. Local historical societies and libraries, they could also have like online and offline photo collections of an area. Um, and you might even be able to find like a postcard or a photo of the town just by searching auction sites online. So those are also really great tips. Um, the fourth tip I have for you is look at those old books. I love old books. I love books, period. So, um, but if your online family tree has um, produced previously unknown ancestors, you can always search in Google Books. Um, it's the, the link is books.google.com. Um, or you can look in the historical book collections online. Um, if you have a library, you can also check there as well. If your family lived in the U.S. county um, early within its history, you might find mention of them in books um, based on the area or that county, which are specific. Even if your ancestors aren't mentioned though, um, a county history is really a great way for you to learn more about what the lives looked like during that time that your ancestor was there. Um, it can also be a possibility to find information about a family's land purchases, um, maybe migration histories, or even marriages that might have taken place within that town or county. And number five, um, I want you guys to look at surnames. Maybe you found out your ancestor had a really uncommon surname um, from that online family tree. If this is the case, um, search the Geographic Names Information Center, the GNIS, the acronym database, just to see if you can locate that surname. The GNIS is a database. It um, contains place names, historical names, um, of places that no longer exist. It's a really great resource. Um, just because in our ancestors' day, towns and locations were often named after the early settlers. So if you're not sure where your ancestor lived or maybe they migrated to, searching the GNIS database um, for their name and definitely check the spelling variations, it really could lead you to a landmark that might bear that ancestor's name. If you do find a clue, you can then check with a county um, his history or local reference center just to get more information um, about that name. And maybe they're gonna have documentation on file. Look for these types of um, websites online with your state archives. Um, and even your historical societies might have some information or you can simply just run a search for genealogy data and include the state name and that might populate some results online for you. Um, you can use an uncommon surname in other ways. If you find a lot of matches when like you're doing your search for ancestors with that common name, um, type in their relatives more like uncommon names and look at original records for different clues. You could potentially uncover um, that your ancestor in the next household or on that census record, um, or maybe on the same boat per the passenger list, um, 
was related to your ancestor and put those ties together. So just kind of, you have to be a little bit creative, but you never know what you're going to uncover. Um, number six, examine those military service records. Um, you know, closely look at the online tree for any reference um, to ancestors that might have been in the military or, you know, the dates of birth that could match a male ancestor who served in a war. There's so many free military records available online right now, especially um, for Civil War soldiers, but also for other wars throughout North America. So it's not just limited. It's really easy to verify Civil War service at the soldiers and sailors system. If you enter in a soldier's last name, um, and then if you have like any further information, um, like the state or the unit, um, and then Union or Confederate, please be aware though that not all the sailors have been entered into the system to date. Um, and then after verifying enlistment, click on the name of that regiment to view the history um, from the date of the organization to the date that, of the muster out. You could also find links to like major battles um, the regiment fought, fought in. Um, so do research um, on this information and you can learn a little bit more. I do have um, a website for the nps.gov Civil War um, Soldiers and Sailors database that I'll put in the link below. Um, and then number seven, seek those religious records. Um, maybe what you find from an online family tree is going to tell you that the family was really religious um, and even list maybe a church or a parish that that family attended. Start your research by searching the internet for that place name. If it's still an active church, request those records from the church for everything from christening records to baptismal certificates. Um, if the church is in, no longer active, Try to learn the religion's organization structure um, and then look for an archive that might hold those old records. A lot of times when churches are no longer active, they will displace um, their records to another um, local church. So it's just kind of following that paper trail. You can also look at the Family History Library, the FLH. Um, on familysearch.org for they they have so many microfilmed religious records and all you have to do is search by the county in their online catalog and it's going to bring up a database full um, and then also search online for photos of um, church histories if you find that you know this establishment is only mentioned in a family tree you can kind of utilize the internet and the city directories to find nearby churches that your ancestors may have attended and then request records um, for that search. And like, I wanna, I, I do a little bit of Toledo, Ohio history. Um, I don't know if you follow my Instagram account, but it's at a genealogy investigator. And um, I recently did a uh, post about one of the local first churches in Toledo and um, they were in existence until the seventies and the 1970s, and then they closed down, but they were absorbed by another church who had a very similar name. So you do kind of have to get creative, but if you know the lay of the land, it can really help. And there is a lot of information out there just to help you um, kind of navigate that. Number eight, um, our last step to verify your finds and see where they lead look at the death details. Chances are pretty high that your online tree discoveries include death dates. Um, look at these dates in official vital records, um, look to obituaries, and then um, look to cemetery records to confirm. Most states began recording death dates in the late 19th century. Um, most of these records can now be searched online, or you can reach out to the health department or vital records office for death certificates if you know where the death had occurred. Um, for older records, you might have to consult with the state archives. Also, I want you to know the restrictions um, that could be in place for records 75 years or more after death. Um, there are some privacy concerns, so you would have to check with your um, local archives to see what stipulations are in place for that. For historical obituaries, you can search online um, through newspaper collections and usually the newspaper collections are going to be at the subscription level. If the papers that you need are not located online, you can always search the microfilm versions, which can usually be found at local libraries. 
there's really um, several free cemetery websites where volunteers are able to submit names and tombstone inscriptions just to help you locate an ancestral burial site. Um, find a grave is a great one. I'm just kind of throwing that out there. I know I referenced that one quite a bit. For every burial, um, and they, I do want to caution though, they are not all listed. Um, but these sites do have millions of names to date. Um, and then if you find yourself not locating your ancestor, check with the Ancestral County site on US Gen Web. Um, they house volunteer submitted transcriptions. So you can also check with the cemeteries itself and maybe they'll have further details on burials. Finding your ancestors in an online tree, it can be really frustrating um, if there's no sources to back up the information. But it can also be really, really rewarding when you're breaking through a brick wall that has really halted your search to date. Um, the clues in an online family tree, they can help you track down source information about how and where that family had lived and to kind of help tie the pieces together and offer you um, some further clues just to get your search going again. So um, that's gonna sum it up for uh, my eight steps to verify your finds and see where they lead. Um, as always, I do want to note, um, please join my mailing list. I do do newsletters weekly and they'll be delivered right to your inbox, which is a great feature. Um, I do have seats available for my genealogy course. Um, it's an A to Z course that gives you everything you need to start your genealogy business um, in an affordable package. It's a six week self-paced program and you do get a certificate to add to your portfolio, which is a great feature. Um, and you get full access to me as well. And that is open. I do have a few more seats left. And then I do also want to touch on my services. Um, I offer personalized research, um, DNA consulting, and I do do uh, full service assistance with family trees and pedigree charts. So if you are trying to find your ancestor, please think about hiring me. I do offer a one hour risk free, um, no obligation consultation for free. So you have nothing to lose. Um, just so we can get to know each other, I can kind of figure out your objectives and we can see if we're a good match to work together. Um, that's going to be all for me today. Um, if you are looking for some blog posts to read to help you with your genealogy, please feel free to visit my website, thegenealogyinvestigator.com. Um, and I will see you guys in the next installment. Thanks.